What about mini meat? Edible insects and the quest for sustainable protein. My name is Dr. Valerie Stahl, and I'm a postdoctoral research associate here in the Global Health Institute at UW Madison. Today, I want to push you to think about another meat, that is, edible insects. Now, for the real question would you eat a bug? The first time I willingly ate an insect, I was 13 years old on a family trip to Costa Rica. I vividly remember how hesitant I was to raise a fried ant to my mouth and the squeamish feeling I had in my gut when the chef brought the plate to the table. But I also remember how surprisingly crunchy, crispy, and flavorful that bite was. It wasn't until years later that I began to realize the positive role that insects can play in our food system. The idea of eating insects has obviously stuck with me as I currently direct MITEI, the mission to improve global health through insects here at UW. MITEI is investigating the social, environmental, and health implications of insect agriculture and insect eating around the globe. Let me start by outlining the current agricultural context as I see it in the most simple terms possible. Our food system is squeezed on all sides by a growing population, a changing climate, unnecessary food waste, and inequitable distribution, to name a few. As the population grows, more people will be able to afford those extra delicious but resource-intensive foods like meat and dairy, which will shift demand. And while we are producing more food than ever before, we often do it at the expense of the environment. We are actually driving climate change through unsustainable practices. Moreover, millions of people remain hungry while others consume too much unhealthy food. It is imperative that we make change. Clearly, there is a need to generate innovative agricultural solutions that protect both human and planetary health. Insect agriculture is one such solution. I first became interested in the topic in 2013 when the United Nations came out with a report that boldly recommended an increase in worldwide insect consumption, also known as entomophagy or entomophagy, as one possible means to address global malnutrition and combat climate change. Insect eating is not a new concept, and while it might seem strange to us, Americans are actually in the minority when it comes to not eating them. Two billion people in more than 130 nations live in places where insect eating is common among some part of the population. Many people choose from the more than 2,100 known edible species they eat regularly. Insects are eaten raw, pan-fried, boiled, processed into powders, and cooked in a variety of ways. They also play an important role in food culture and food tradition. The reasons for eating insects are numerous. Humans and our relatives have probably been eating them partially because they're widely abundant. Insects are ubiquitous across nearly every corner of the globe and comprise about one of the 1.5 million species that have been described. Secondly, they're nutrient dense. Chimpanzees and early humans probably always ate insects because they were full of protein and fat like other meats. They're also easy to access. Compare social insects like termites, which you can fish out of a stable mound, to chasing after wild game. The insects were a lot easier to catch. There is anthropological evidence that insect eating may have contributed to hominid cognitive evolution and actually helped us develop larger brain sizes. As can be seen on this map, insect consumption has been recorded across the globe, with the highest number of species consumed in Mexico, India, and China. In these places, 200 or even more than 300 species are currently consumed. It should be noted, however, that the vast majority of insects consumed today are collected by harvesting from the wild. This is a good thing because it makes insects a free, locally available resource. Insect harvesting can, however, if unmonitored, cause significant ecological damage. Moreover, if you don't know what an insect has been near or been feeding on, there can be food safety concerns. Wild harvested insects are often seasonal, meaning that they may not contribute to year-round food security or diets as well. That's why I'm investigating insect farming, or mini livestock, as one way to safely increase access to sustainable insect foods year-round. There are many benefits to farming insects. First and foremost, insects require significantly less feed than traditional livestock. This is because they have a higher feed conversion efficiency and are better at converting food into body mass. One reason for this is the fact that most insects are ectothermic or cold-blooded, so unlike us, they don't need to regulate their body temperature or waste energy doing so. In addition to having a high feed conversion efficiency, another important consideration with regard to feed is the type required. 
Many insects can consume agricultural byproducts, food waste, manure, or other biomass that is not edible to humans or our livestock, making them amazing recyclers. They can turn something that is devoid of nutrients suitable for humans into a nutrition-packed snack. And lastly, with regards to feed, many insects are almost entirely edible. This is important because other animals, like fish and chickens, are also really efficient at converting food into body mass. But a large amount of other animal products, like all of the feathers, are not necessarily edible. But you can actually put a whole mealworm or whole cricket right in your mouth. A recent estimate showed that it takes only 1.7 kilograms of grain feed to yield 1 kilogram of edible cricket. Conversely, it may take up to 10 kilograms of grain feed to yield 1 kilogram of edible beef. I do want to point out, however, that these comparisons are based on a U.S. style of feedlot operations. You certainly don't have to use or exclusively grain feed to produce beef. You could use grass or other feed amendments. Also, remember that insects are cold-blooded. So in the Wisconsin winter, for example, if you were farming crickets, you would have to spend quite a bit on energy to keep these animals warm so that their growth rates stay high. And crickets, while they are efficient at converting feed into body mass, are certainly influenced by the quality of that feed. So they'll be much more efficient on a grain than they will an agricultural byproduct. So I just want to point out that there's a lot of nuance when you see comparisons like this in terms of feed conversion efficiency. Insects also require significantly less water to produce than other livestock, as they are skilled at drawing water out of their food. Mealworms that are eating a perfect diet require about four times less water per gram of protein produced when compared to beef. Considering that agriculture demands almost 70% of our freshwater withdrawals, this is a really important consideration for climate in the future. It also makes insects more drought resistant than many other forms of livestock. As I mentioned previously, insects require less feed per kilogram of edible product than other forms of livestock, and less feed required translates into less land cleared and less land used to grow that feed. The UN estimates that some insects, like mealworms, require significantly less land to produce one kilogram of protein compared to beef, even when beef is highly efficient. Insects can also be reared in tight, confined spaces. Some of them actually prefer living that way, and it means that you can rear insects vertically. Anyone can be an insect farmer. You don't have to have a garden or acres of land. I'm currently farming insects in my one-bedroom apartment here in Madison under the kitchen sink. And the fact that they can be reared with very limited technology and low-tech makes insect farming accessible for many people. In addition to their highly efficient use of natural resources, most edible insects emit significantly fewer greenhouse gases. Mealworms and crickets, in particular, do not emit methane, making their global warming potential significantly lower than cattle or swine. This graph depicts the greenhouse gas equivalents estimated per kilogram of mass gain for three insect species, pigs and beef cattle, including carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. Lastly, and my personal favorite, is that insects are nutrient-dense. Most contain all essential amino acids for human nutrition, and many have plenty healthy fatty acids. Aceta domesticus crickets, as you can see here, are high in zinc, iron, and calcium, with values greater than beef. This means insects might play an important role in combating some micronutrient deficiencies, such as iron deficiency anemia, in contexts where people aren't getting iron from other food sources. For those of you with allergies, you should note that typically insects are gluten, soy, nut, and dairy-free, depending on what they've been feeding on. Compared with conventional animal foods such as eggs, chicken, and ground beef, the proximate nutrient content of farmed Aceta domesticus crickets is favorable. As you can see here in blue, the percent protein by weight in crickets is similar to beef and chicken, but higher than eggs. In orange, the fat percentage is lower, but the majority of the fat in, in crickets is healthy polyunsaturated fatty acids, such as those omega-3s and omega-6s you may have heard of. But perhaps most interesting to me is the fact that farmed crickets and insects overall also contain dietary fiber, whereas other animal products do not. And diets that are high in dietary fiber are associated with a reduced risk of breast cancer, diverticular disease, heart disease, and metabolic syndrome. I think the most exciting thing about insect agriculture is that there are many uses for edible insects. First, they can be fed directly to chickens and fish or processed into a feed for our pets. Secondly, they can help us with waste reduction. 
Insects could be used to break down food waste. Some can actually digest plastics or styrofoam. Others could be used on farms to help us deal, deal with dairy cow manure here in Wisconsin. The insect waste itself, or frass, is a great fertilizer to put back on the garden. And the insect's component parts, such as the proteins and oils, could be, said, could be sold into future markets. And of course, insects can be consumed directly by humans. There are efforts now to use insect protein in ready-to-use therapeutic foods, which are a treatment for acute malnutrition. I've outlined a lot of potential benefits of insect agriculture for you here, and you may be wondering if anything can go wrong. I think a lot could go wrong. Insect agriculture is a really nascent industry. We have much to learn. While humans have been cultivating and semi-cultivating honeybees and silkworms for thousands of years, it's only in recent history that we've really invested in mass production of other insects for human food and animal feed. So there are many ways that the industry could take a wrong turn if, we're, if we aren't careful. We need to think about how we can treat insects ethically. They are animals deserving of our respect. How should we treat insect farmers and harvesters or collectors so that they are compensated fairly and treated ethically? How do we optimize production of edible insects and think about profits, which are important to farmers, without negating the potential environmental benefits of edible insects? And how do we mitigate risks, like the risk of escape of insects from an insect farm onto agricultural land? Also, we need to think about whose knowledge is privileged. I certainly don't believe that I or any researcher at a university in Europe or the United States knows the most about edible insects collection or harvesting or farming. There are many populations and people around the world who have more knowledge and it's important that their voices are at the table. So I would say that on paper there is good evidence that edible insects and insect agriculture could contribute to improved human health with a lower environmental impact compared to other animal products. But I would also argue that there is a huge research gap. We will see some claims and articles out there that say that we can save the world by eating insects. I think those statements are short-sighted because we need to know more about how exactly we should cultivate mini livestock. What are the direct health impacts of consuming them? We know they're nutrient dense, but there aren't a lot of studies looking at other potential health impacts. How feasible will it be for people in different contexts to be insect farmers? How socially acceptable will insects be across cultures? And how should insects be regulated? Um, these are all questions that we are trying to answer here with the Mighty Project. So if you're interested in any of this, um, please feel free to reach out to me. So I'd like to end by addressing some of the questions you certainly still have, including, this is great, but will Americans really ever eat insects? To answer that, we have to first understand why we have an aversion to eating insects today. I think Western aversion stems from several things, including a history of ethnocentrism and othering whereby those first Europeans to North America and other parts of the world observed local people eating food that was different from their own, such as insects, and immediately perceived it to be inferior and disgusting. Secondly, we have a cultural taboo in the United States around insect eating. We think of insects as pests that transmit disease, and we perpetuate negative stereotypes about them through popular culture shows like Fear Factor. Third, we live very separate lives from insects. We have screens on all our windows and we seal our doors very tightly. These are not practices you will observe in much of the tropics where insect eating is more common. Lastly, with the evolution of the human diet, our ancestors who migrated to northern latitudes could not rely on insects in the winter as a food. So much of their effort and attention was put on animals that would be available year round. But despite these drivers of us rejecting insects, I do want to point out that food culture does change quickly. 20 or 30 years ago, no one in the United States was eating sushi. Raw fish was considered disgusting and taboo. But slowly, it infiltrated the coast in San Francisco and New York as kind of a fancy, posh food. And now you can get sushi at a gas station in Nebraska. Likewise, perceptions of soy, soy milk, and tofu were not initially positive in the U.S., but with some strategic health messaging, soy products have been readily adopted, and you can now get a soy latte pretty much anywhere. It just takes time and exposure. Chefs today face a new task of how to play with, amplify, and utilize, with all of their unique properties, insects in food. 
Some chefs are disguising insects by using them as a protein powder to supplement something like a pancake, shown here at the top right. Others are being bored, bold and forward-facing with insects on plates. Some are making them a snack, like chapulines, the traditional roasted and spiced Mexican grasshopper, which is now being served at the Seattle Mariners baseball stadium. But this is really to say that the culinary tide is changing. And it is changing quickly. Currently, there are more than 30 U.S. and Canadian-based companies that use edible insects in their products or sell edible insects as food. From cricket bars to mealworm crackers to cricket pasta, it really is what I like to call a bug revolution in cuisine. Moreover, there are numerous companies across the globe investing in insects as feed for fish and chickens. The French company Insect, or Y Insect, just added $224 million in equity to $148 million that they previously raised to produce mealworms as an efficient and nutrient-dense feed product. In the U.S., companies like EnviroFlight and EnteraFeed are leading the industry in using black soldier flies to break down waste and generate feed. You may also be wondering if vegetarians can eat insects. Well, as a vegetarian myself, I want to point out that it really depends on your motivations for being a vegetarian. Of course, insects are animals. Vegetarians may have an environmental, animal rights, and or humanist concerns with their diets, and insects may or may not fit in there. But some have argued that there are ways to compassionately harvest edible insects. They are cold-blooded, so if you freeze them, their metabolism essentially slows down and slows down, and so some say it's kind of like they fall asleep. And I want to point out that, like it or not, everyone, vegans and vegetarians included, already eat insects without knowing it. There's parts per million insect allowed in every uh, processed food product, and we simply cannot remove insects from all of our food given how integral they are to agriculture. There is a small but growing movement of vegetarians and vegans who also eat insects, which you could check out um, through the Ento Vegan movement if you're interested. I do want to point out that there are allergy risks with eating insects. People who have severe reaction to shellfish may also be allergic to insects because there's an antigenic determinant conserved across arthropods. Also, people who work with insects, such as on farms, can develop a sensitivity and an immune response from repeat exposure to insects. But overall, insects are just as safe as other animal food products, um, provided that they are processed and cooked and that you um, clean them properly before you eat them. Many people ask me, do I personally have to eat insects to make a difference? And I think the answer is no. It is okay to not want to eat insects. After all, you probably didn't grow up eating insects. But, as Professor Julie Lesnick from Wayne State University often says, don't yuck my yum. It is important that we don't diminish the cultures and food traditions of many people around the world. In a paper by Heather Louie, the authors argue, to embrace the idea of entomophagy is to embrace in our bodies as well as in our minds and souls the full humanity of other classes, races, and cultures. Regardless of whether or not you're ready to bite down on some crunchy crickets, we can all help normalize entomophagy and support the growing evidence base. We can try insects, buy insects, or eat meat and eggs from animals that were fed insects. But perhaps most importantly, we can change the way we talk about insects as food. So here are your take home messages for today's lecture. Insects are a totally legitimate food. They may be able to be reared with a lower environmental impact than other meat. Insects require less land and limited technology than conventional livestock, so they could be farmed in resource and land limited areas. More than 2,100 known species are available for us to consider, and they are useful for both human food and animal feed. There is potential to use insects to recycle wastes like food waste and maybe even plastics. There's some more research happening on that now. Insects provide ample nutrients, including dietary fiber, and they could help boost human health. Insects are not a silver bullet for our environmental and agricultural woes, but it's a really nascent industry, so we're just scratching the surface of what is possible. And with that, I'd like to say thank you, and please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions.